Uh, let's talk today about the uh, what type of data uh, you can find uh, among the publicly released uh, gravitational wave data. So yeah, my name is Martin. I I work at the Gravitational Wave Open Science Center, and basically what we do at WASC um, is uh, release, archive, and serve gravitational wave data to the scientific community and the public in general. Uh, we offer a catalog of events with parameter estimations, uh, posterior samples, um, strain data, and, and basically data quality flag segments of, I'm gonna talk about all of this in the next uh, future slides. And we also provide information and tools and software to understand and use the data, uh, like tutorials, uh, interactive web apps. We have a web API and documentation, uh, that kind of things. So I encourage you to go to our website, wasc.org, and explore uh, all of the, the things that we have to offer. Um, this is currently the the detectors for which we have data. Um, there are, because you, you know, there's uh, two main um, ground-based uh, observatories in in the United States, uh, one in uh, Hanford, Washington, the other in Livingston, Louisiana. Uh, this comprises the LIGO uh, detector set. And there's uh, a few others in Europe, uh, Virgo in Italy and Geo 600 in Germany. And now we have Kagra in Japan as well. And uh, we have data for all of this. So if you're interested in, in getting data of any of these um, detectors, you can find them at wasp.org. Uh, this is a, a brief summary of how the, the number of detections uh, through the years. We have the first observing run, 01, um, that detected the first three uh, gravitational waves. This is the first run that actually detected um, events, gravitational wave events. And then on the second run, 02, uh, eight more events were detected. There's a big jump in the number of detections by an order of magnitude in 03. We have on the first half of 03, uh, 44 events were detected and uh, for 03B, uh, another 35. So we expect to have to, to find even more in next observation runs. Uh, so we have now a grand total of 90 events, 90 confident events in the gravitational wave transient catalog. Uh, there are a few other marginal events which is just not would not as confident as the confident events. Uh, so we have over ninety events total um, in our website, and yep, this is our website, um, the Gravitational Wave Open Science Center, and you will interact with this website mainly through the menu bar here at the top. Um, today I'm gonna focus mostly on this first menu item in the data, because this is where you will find most of our data right there. So let's begin with strain data. Strain data, as you may know, is basically the main product, the main data product of an observatory. It's um, also known as H of T or the differential arm length of the, of the interferometers. And this is the main um, time series that you will use to um, analyze for gravitational wave events. Uh, so where can you find it? Well, it's there in the, the first item. If you click there, we'll take you to a page where you can uh, find all of the different releases, public releases of, of data. Public releases usually are basically two kind. You can roughly so there are two kinds of public releases. Sometimes um, during an observation run, there's a detection of an event and it is published and made public during the event, during the run. So this is basically detected by the low latency group and it is released early, um, early meaning before the bulk data in the event portal. So there you can find a specific strain data and segments for that event. And the other type of event, uh, the other type of um, 
release, public release is basically done at the end of our Rosary run. And that is the whole bulk data of the whole run uh, for all the strain data for all for all times, uh, whether there's a detection there or not. <clears throat> and <clears throat> this uh, bulk data is um, released in four kilohertz and 16 kilohertz sampling rate. And along with documentation and the segment information. Um, but like I said, this is typically done at the end of an observing run. And here on the on the left, there's uh, examples of uh, past data releases, and you can see that you can you can get all all of those uh, in this page. If you're gonna work with, with with all of the data, we recommend uh, that you do the download through something called the CVMFS, which is basically like a distributed file system uh, developed by CERN to replicate the data, remote data to replicate it locally on your computer. And you can use this one to basically download the whole data that we have to offer if, if that's what, um, what you need. And there's also, other, uh, you can use NDS2 that you can find out uh, more about it in our website, or you can use dedicated software like GWPy. Uh, so yeah, those are the ways to download data. And if you're not interested in the strain uh, time series itself, and you're more interested in the individual event or a catalog, or uh, then you can also find that we offer um, that through this menu item here in a second uh, item. And it will take you to the event portal. In the event portal, uh, basically the, the main one catalog that you definitely will want to check is the GWTC, the Gravitational Weight Tension Catalog. Uh, this is like a curated list of all the um, events that we are finding um, with the latest parameter estimations. Uh, but you can also uh, find other releases, past releases, or uh, a full list of all of the events of, with all of the versions, or query your own search uh, for specific cases. So I'm going to go through all of these elements. Uh, let's first check out these releases. You click there, you take to the release list page. And here you can see a list of all of the past releases. And uh, uh, basically a catalog or a release is a collection of events with parameter estimations. Um, like I said, the, more, the, the one that you kind of probably want to check out first is the GWTC. But there are like children, uh, you could say children catalogs for GWTC. You have the GWTC1, which corresponds to for 01 and 02 only, then the GWTC2 for 03A run, GWTC3, 03B run, and there are others like GWTC2.1. Um, uh, you, can, you can find them all in the release, um, the release list for the, in the event portal of our website. And this may have confident detections or marginal detections or a mix of both. Um, and if you uh, don't know exactly what they contain, well, here you have a description for each one of the releases and, and the, the corresponding publication uh, whenever is, whenever, whatever the, there is one. So that's all for catalogs. Um, here in the events, uh, this is basically a, a list of all of the different events and all of the different versions that we have. If you click here, you, it's going to take you to a um, list view of the events. Um, the first thing you you you'll find in in these lists are the name, the version, uh, what release it belongs to, and a few parameters like the GPS time of the detection and the masses, etc. Um, don't uh, if you click on this little arrow, uh, it will give you more options to display parameters. So don't miss on that one. Uh, we have more parameters than the ones that you originally see. Um, 
so all of these parameters are parameters of the merger uh, and and yeah and you can you can check them all out to to see them and this is the list view if you click on each, any one of these events it will take you to the detail page so in the detail page uh, you can see events um, isolated uh, with more detail and the first thing I want to point out is that you may find out that their events have versions so you may ask well isn't it an event a single detection a uh, single point in time and yes it is uh, an event is some is is just one uh, but what happens is that um, the event or the strain data is reanalyzed many times and every time we analyze the data uh, instead of replacing, for example, we analyze a chunk of data and we uh, we do estimate the parameters of the merger. Instead of replacing the parameter values of of this event, we create a new version and we keep the the previous uh, values in a previous version. So that's why these events sometimes can contain up to four different versions. This, that's because it, it's been reanalyzed several times. And this could be for many reasons. Um, typically, you have different calibration on the strain data because, because you find a better cleaning technique um, to denoise the data. Uh, you may have different analysis result or a new publication that publishes new parameter estimations, for example. Uh, so a, every each one of these will produce a new version of the event. Uh, this has the advantage that if you if you wrote a paper with a specific uh, uh, event version, then you can refer it to directly, um, and it won't it, it will not change. Uh, typically, each version corresponds to a different catalog. Uh, that's basically the catalog or publication. Um, that's that's typically the case. Uh, another thing you can find here in the detail page are links to the Grace DB. Uh, if you don't know, a Grace, uh, the low latency group uh, basically uses uh, the Grace DB uh, as every time it detects an event, it will issue an alert, typically to observatories that are interested in doing electromagnetic follow up for these events. Uh, and it publish this. Uh, detection trigger on the Grace DB website uh, with some preliminary um, parameter estimation, some parameters like the masses and the localization error, you know, uh, expressed in a in a sky map. Uh, so this, if if you haven't checked out, you should keep this website in mind, uh, Grace DB, and you can find links for each one of the events. Um, there in the detail page, the, the these triggers basically come before um, the publication on on WASC. So the timeline is basically it, it's first detected by the low latency group, published on Grace DB, and then this is basically a, of an online um, type of analysis. Then it's revisited offline, and if it, it turns out that it's an actual um, gravitational wave event, then uh, it, it goes into WASC. So it will appear first on GraceDB, but then you can refer it back uh, through these links. So that's for GraceDB. And another thing you can find here in the detail page is the many pipelines. Um, LIGO has many detection pipelines, uh, or I, will, I should say LVK, has many detection pipelines. Uh, here's an example for have a pipeline for PyCBC. That's a search pipeline, or GSTLAL, and each one of them uh, publishes um, uh, detection parameters that are not always the same. But we usually there's one that is um, the preferred one or the default, um, and you can check them all here. Um, and sometimes some of the pipelines will produce, uh, will have, will contain links uh, that will go into Zenodo. Zenodo is like a type of archive um, website. And from there you can find 
uh, links to download the posterior samples or sky maps um, for this, these events. Uh, not all of the, not all of the events have them, but you can some of them will, and you, you should check uh, if there's any there. Uh, that's for the pipelines. Oh, I'm gonna talk about uh, about segments later on, but for now, um, I would like to um, point out that you can query for segments from the detail page as well. And that will that will go, take you to a page where you can find data quality segment flags for the event uh, for the particular event that that that, that is displayed here. Um, and yeah, uh, just just so so you know that you can actually uh, query for segments for a particular event. Uh, through the event portal, but I will talk about this uh, later on. Uh, and finally, um, you can also download the strain. Uh, this is not a bulk data strain, but it's just uh, the strain around the event. Um, and you can preview there with a Qtron form, uh, how it looks like in frequency, um, or download the strain files directly in different formats. Uh, you have a gravitational wave frames or HTF or just simple ASCII plain TXT files. Uh, and you can find it in four kilohertz sampling rate or 16 kilohertz and in 30 so 32 second window or 4,000 second window around the event. So plenty of uh, different options depending on your needs. And lastly, on the event portal, uh, we have this um, handy query form in which if you have a specific uh, type of search that you're interested in, that you want to constrain the parameters somehow, uh, you can do it through this query page. Um, basically, for example, if you want, if you're interested in mergers that have the secondary mass less than five solar masses, and you want to, you want to restrict all of the events uh, for that particular constraint you have in mind, then you can use the query uh, page there. You can, you can constrain pretty much every, every parameter that we release on the, on the event list tables. You can constrain here, uh, or you can also constrain on, on dates. If you're interested in a period of time, detections during a time window, you can do so too. And uh, the output could be HTML, JSON, CSV, or ASCII. Um, so yeah, uh, to, please check that out as well. Uh, next topic, timelines. Um, the timelines app, um, you can find here, third item, the, the menu. And um, basically it's, a, it's an app We'll take it to this page. It's an app to query for segment data. So on this one, you can just choose a, a run and a GPS interval. If you don't, uh, the GPS interval is uh, in principle fixed to the whole duration of the run. But if you want to restrict it more, you can you can change as well the, the, the GPS interval. And then once you fix the inter time interval you're interested in, you can either um, download strain data for each one of the observatories that were um, active at that time, or you can download a list of segments um, in JSON format or ASCII format. Um, or if you're not interested in, in the actual numbers, but you wanna just visualize how, how they look like, uh, in the timeline, then you can use this plot thing. Uh, you just have to select the segment, the type of segment that you're interested in. Um, click on that display button, and we'll take you to this page where you can visualize better the, the segments. Um, basically, a segment is a on-off um, 
type of time series. Uh, it tells you, depending on the segment, it will all give you different information, but the ones, the segments that are related to data quality basically tells you when data is usable or not, or not none. It's, it's basically the, the quality of, of this, of this, um, this stream. So why, why would a, a piece of data not be useful? Well, there are many reasons. For example, there could be excess environmental noise, for, um, angular misalignment of the test masses, you may have saturated photo, photo diodes and many other countless glitches. And each one of these will, will flag um, the strain data uh, so you can avoid, avoid that, that specific segment. Um, these, are, uh, these are basically the, the CAT1, CAT2, et cetera. Uh, type of segments. There are also other type of segments that deal with hardware injections uh, that you also may want to uh, check that out. This is, for example, an example. This is an example of uh, Geo and Kagra. Uh, these are six segments, and some of them are CAT1. This is data quality, and some others are hardware injections. Uh, so, yeah. Um, these hardware injections are intentionally added to measure things like false alarms rate or detection rates, for example. Uh, so yeah, this is how you query for segments. And lastly, I would like to talk about the web API. Uh, so far, everything I have talked about before, mainly focus on the HTML part of the website, the the face that you see in a web browser. But if you're doing more programmatic things, um, you may want to interact with the website through the API. This is uh, basically for here, you can find the API documentation in software page in the software section. It will take you to this page. Um, and basically the API, uh, you communicate all of these different uh, data products that I talked about, you can find in the JSON format uh, through all of these URL nodes. There's a, a long list of nodes. Uh, I'm sorry, Martin, uh, you've been muted. You could unmute yourself, I'd appreciate it. That was my fault, sorry for the trouble. No problem. Uh, when, uh, <laughs> maybe when... maybe back, say one minute or 30 seconds. Oh, I see. Uh, no, yeah, so I was talking about the, the Wave API. Um, on the Wave API, maybe you wanna um, um, interact with the website, not through the HTML pages, but um, um, through our, our API that, that returns uh, the information in JSON format, which is more convenient to, to work if you're um, from a script, for example, and to parse the data. All of the data products that I mentioned before, um, like uh, the event catalogs, uh, the strain data, well, not those, yeah, the, the, the segments, all of that is available uh, through a JSON API, uh, which is more convenient for, like I said, uh, working programmatically through scripts. Um, there is though um, a Python client that you may want to use instead of yourself writing your own client. Uh, if you're working on, on Python, uh, you definitely should check the WASC Python client. You can, of course, also interact with it using curl, for example, or JavaScript. Um, but if you're using Python, we have a, um, another way that you can just uh, pip install WASC. Uh, that's the name of the client. Or you can read the documentation through our WASC client uh, at gitlaigo.org slash WASC slash client. And there's also um, another way uh, to do it through a Python 
library called GWPy. And I believe that you are going to learn how to use both of these um, clients or software uh, in the hands-on session. So, so yeah, uh, you can learn about that then. And this is all I want to say. So thank you very much.